I'd like to turn your attention today to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 1 states that once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander, the powers in the unseen world. That He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. And by our very na nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. But God, so rich in mercy, and He loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. For He raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with Him in heavenly realms because that we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in, in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of His grace and kindness towards us as shown in all that He has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this, for it is the gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we've done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece, and He's created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do, so that we can do the good things He's planned for us a long ago. Are you thankful for the Word of God today? Amen. May the Lord bless you today, and you may be seated. I am beyond thankful for His grace. And for God's mercies today. Amen, aren't you? Amen. Thankful for His grace and His mercy. We are today a workmanship of Christ. So that you and I cannot take credit. And I'm doing a series about labels because so many times people put labels on us. And then we put labels on us. But I want you to know today... God already has us stamped out and that we are a child of God. I am so thankful today for the very grace of God. I am thankful today that I am saved by grace through faith. Amen. Anybody thankful for that today? I, I like what one man, how, he, how he, he illustrated. He said, it is by grace that we're saved. And, and Paul cannot speak of, of the glorious works of God without reminding us that it is the gift of grace given to the undeserving. And so we are not even saved by our, our faith, even through faith itself, not as a work, but by grace through faith. And the illustration is this, that we can think of water flowing through a hose, that the water is the important part. But it is communicated through a hose. It is the hose that does not quench our thirst, but it is the water that does. So then the hose brings water to the place where you can gain benefit from it. So I am thankful today that I and you today have been saved by grace. To be saved by grace, that means that that there is no way on earth that you and I can earn it by our very own works. And I'm thankful for that. I am so beyond thankful. Amen. That God has given you and I a gift. And this gift is not based upon works, upon all the things that I'm doing. 
to be able to earn it. But God has given us a, 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 a gift. It is in the first three verses of this chapter that shows us how morally and how spiritually that we were bankrupt, that we owed everything to God, that if it wasn't for His grace and His mercy, if it wasn't for the cross of Calvary today, that you and I would definitely be dead and that you and I today would not be able to have the freedoms that we deal with and what we see. That we, by nature, the Bible says, that we were children of wrath. We were children uh, of disobedience. It was our sin nature. And we would have continued to live in that but I am thankful, amen, that God robed Himself in flesh and came and dwelt among us, lived among us, and dealt with the things that you and I deal with and the temptations and all of those things. He walked this life yet without sin. And He went to the cross of Calvary and that He was the Lamb that was slain for you and I. He was the spotless, the innocent One. And I am beyond thankful thankful for it, that I owe everything to Him. And I never want to take it for granted that when I think what He paid, that price, that ultimate price of laying down His life for my sin and for your sin, thus ushering in today that God's grace today is what comes in into my life and brings that salvation unto us. We cannot change our nature. Jeremiah says, he said in Jeremiah 13 and 23, can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? Then may we also do good uh, that are accustomed to do evil. Jeremiah said that, that you can't change who you are. You can't do it. I can't just think myself a different color. I can't just think myself and, and change uh, uh, the spots that are on my body. I can't uh, just think about it and do it. That, that How can you? You can't change your very own nature. But I'm thankful today that there is a God who came into our life today and said, I can change it and I will do it for you. Peter, as he was speak, as he as he speaks to those who had who had escaped the very pollutions of the world, uh, to remind us and to remind us today once again of the proverb, uh, as it talks about how that the dog will always return to its vomit. So is my sinful nature always going back, uh, Amen. But I needed the blood to come and to settle that atonement. For my life as the pig that would be washed wants to go back and run to the mud again. So is our nature. We would want to go back and do all of those things. And so I needed a nature to be changed. I needed a, 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 something to come into my life and to absolutely bring a change. And it is a change that you and I could not bring on ourselves. Amen. So why do we do that? It's all simply because it's our nature to go back to the way that it used to be. That's why Jesus said that you must be born again. That you must be born again. Simply if you and I are going to have a new nature in Him. And I'm thankful for that because it lets me know today that if I'm going to be born again, I can't be born again just simply by my works and by the things and all my good deeds and all my good efforts are not that going to, that is going to save me. But Jesus said it up for us that you must be born again of water and of spirit and that there is nothing that you and I can do in and of ourselves to to bring our very own salvation Paul declares that it is not of yourselves it's not of yourselves it is by the very grace and the very mercies of God that there is nothing that we can do in or by ourselves that can save us and so it is today that it is the grace and the mercies of God. There are no laws that we can keep 
that would keep us righteous before God. I'm saved by grace. All the things, if I tried to, to keep all of the commandments and do all the right things, would not save me. I needed the very grace and the mercies of God today to shed uh, the shedding of blood over my life to be able to save me. And so it is today that there are sometimes people have that idea that I'm going to try to live by every single law and, and try to keep all 600 and some laws uh, so simply so I can be accepted by him can i tell you today i am accepted by him even when i have failed him it is because it is by his grace and his love that he continues to love me i'm saved today because i'm continuing to live a life of repentance that while i'm striving to be more like him there is something within me sometimes that falls and i fail but i am thankful today for the grace and the mercy of God that when I fall and I make a mistake I, and I fall down to my knees and realize in my humanity how weak and how frail that I am I, and I look to the cross of Calvary again and I look to a God who said, who came in flesh and died on that cross for me I, not even guaranteed that I would look to him and to to to, to look to him as for salvation but he went to the cross for you and I and I am thankful for that. So salvation comes simply as a gift from God. It is a gift. A gift that you all you have to do is reach out and to receive it. I don't know today who will be hearing this message from now or even into the future that will be ministered at this point. But I want you to know that salvation is a gift gift alone from God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life God so loved the world even with all the sin and the mess ups and mankind reverting back to the, his very own vomit and to his very own ways God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that when you and I today turn our eyes to Jesus Christ and look to him that we will be saved amen and when I continue to study through scripture and I read through the epistles about Paul and, and go even through uh, uh, just all of, all the epistles and, and look at today uh, uh, through the Antichrist uh, we are living in a day and age where there is a very spirit of Antichrist we are living in a time frame uh, when the spirit of Antichrist is uh, living among us it, it is that which says uh, I don't have nothing to do with Christ uh, I have nothing to do with salvation uh, it is all about about me and myself and it's about those things amen and I'm here today to tell you we're living in that time frame when it seems like the spirit of the Antichrist is definitely rampant and I'm thankful for the grace and the mercies of God and I'm thankful as the scriptures have stated that when we look to him and we believe on him and we turn our attention to him that you and I will receive the salvation that he has given you and I. It is a gift from God. And it is a gift that is not earned. A gift. And a gift that's not earned. You see, throughout this week, I, I worked. And my, the, 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 the reward of my work was that somebody wrote a check to me. I was paid my wage based on the work that I did. But my salvation is not based on the works that I do, but my salvation is a gift from God. And it is a gift that is not earned. The Bible says that the wages of sin are death. The payment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is a gift of God. Salvation is not something that even God owes me. 
God didn't owe me salvation. He chose to give me that. Salvation is not something that even I deserve. As a matter of fact, you and I today, we were the ones that deserved to be able to be that on the cross. But salvation is something that I don't even deserve. Salvation is that free gift of God through His very own grace. And so there are so many people today that are, are emphasizing on the things that you should do to be able to get God. Uh, but I've come today to tell you, uh, when I go back and I even look at Scripture, and I look in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2, and when the Spirit of God was poured out uh, there on that day of Pentecost, uh, and I look to see where that, that, that these men heard them speak in other tongues. They heard them magnify God. And all of a sudden there was a stirring in their very own heart. It amazes me how that God pours out His Spirit and He's using tongues and, and using another language to be able to minister to the, to the elite, to those that were learned men. He was taking their, an unknown language to minister and to catch their very own attention and it was there that men's hearts began to turn because they knew there there was something different about these people that these people were unlearned these people they didn't they didn't have the stature or the status in life like they did and yet when it caught their attention and with the spirit of God all over Peter when Peter began to speak there in Acts chapter 2 and began to, to talk to them and then tell them that you're the ones that nailed Jesus Christ to the cross you're the ones that this was the Messiah and the Bible says that they were pricked within their very own heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do and Peter told them to repent and to be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins these are things that you have to do you have to repent and repentance is, is that when all of a sudden these men realize oh it was Jesus that I crucified oh that he was my savior he was my messiah and when they began to turn to look to him that's when repentance already started taking place that if I can get somebody today uh, to be able to recognize uh, that their salvation uh, is not within themselves, uh, but it is because of the cross uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, because of the blood that was shed uh, for you and I today, when I can get somebody to believe uh, and know that Jesus Christ did it, uh, that already repentance happens when they start turning their eyes uh, towards Him. Uh, and the outcome is uh, that I will begin to see my humanity and I will begin to tell him how sorry that I am for the sins that I've committed and the things that I've done wrong and then he Peter said to be baptized in that name that name that is above every name the name of Jesus Christ for the washing away of my sins and then he said that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that it is for you and I today it is for my children and it is for my children's children and it is for all those who are afar off. And so it is that so many people are trying based on works to receive that. But I've come today to emphasize it is a gift from God to you and I. The David, David, the psalmist, asked the question. He said, what shall I re render unto the Lord for all of his benefits unto me? What is it, Lord, that I can, I can do for you and, 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 and give back unto you, Lord, for all the benefits that you have done for me? He concluded that there was nothing that he could do for God except, except what God has done for him. David, when he looked at God and, and God's mercy that was poured out to him, he said, God, what can I do to give back to you for all the things that you've ever done to me? All he had to do is realize that, that I must accept what God has done for me, that it is the grace and the mercies of God. And so he said, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord 
When we talk about a free gift of salvation, however, it is only free to us. It's free to us, but it cost him everything. I was bankrupt spiritually. I had nothing to even pay. And yet he purchased my redemption for me. Psalms chapter 49 and verse 6 says that they that trust in their wealth and they boast themselves and the multitude of their riches. They that trust in their wealth. They that trust in all the things that they've, that they've earned and all the money that they have. He said that they trust in it and then they boast about it. They trust in it. They, they, they have a hard time trusting other things because they are extremely wealthy and they've earned it. They've done it. So they trust in their wealth and they boast themselves and the multitude of their riches. Verse, says, or verse 7 says that none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Meaning that it doesn't matter all the money that you and I have. You can't pay God for somebody else. He said, so none of them can even redeem their brother with all the money that they have. Nor can they give God a ransom for, for, for the, him. Verse 8 says, for the redemption of their souls is costly and no payment is sufficient. Many years ago, Ted Turner had pledged to give a billion dollars to the United Nations. But yet it didn't mean, it doesn't mean that the money that he gave could even earn him his redemption. One of the wealthiest men today that walk on the earth is Jeff Bezos, who created the founder of Amazon at one at a hundred and ninety-seven billion. Uh, dollars that's 197 with nine zeros behind it that if Jeff Bezos gave all of his money away he can't even buy his very own salvation letting us know today what an incredible gift of God it's a gift so many times people think they got to beg for a gift. They got to plead for a gift. They got to beg that God would pour out the spirit and they Lord I'm begging you you know fill me with your spirit and they'll tarry their tarry and they just wear themselves out tarrying but I've come today to tell you it is a gift of God. God wants to give it to you. A great friend of mine was telling me that he was in, in his church, he has a new man uh, that's coming who is a charismatic ordained preacher. And so they got talking about tongues. And my pastor friend asked him, said, well, have you have you received the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues? And he said, you know, I've never spoken in tongues. And so my friend told him, so listen, you don't even have to get at church. But just in your prayer time, why don't you talk to God and ask him to give you the gift? And it was on a Friday night that he was laying in bed. The man told his pastor later on, said, we went to bed, my wife fell asleep, and I just started thinking about the goodness and the mercies of God. Before I knew it, I, tears began to flow down my face. And I don't know what happened, but I just started speaking in a language I don't know anything about. And yet, he didn't have to come to church to be able to receive it. Because it is a gift of God. God wants to give us that very own gift. And so it doesn't matter today all the wealth in the world and those that decided that, you know what, I'll try to earn it. I'll try to, to buy my salvation. All the money in the world could not forgive their sins. How cool is that to think that all you have to do is open up your mouth and talk to Him and tell Him that you are sorry. And then your heart begins to turn to Him. 
And can I tell you today, I do believe that, that salvation is a continual work in our lives. I believe today I'm still striving. I appreciate Brother Vacky. He's been kind of going through the fruit of the Spirit. And I realize today that's what I'm striving after. And I realize today it is a progression in my life that I'm striving and, and trying to attain. I'm trying to be more like Jesus in my life. Amen. God's given us a free gift to you and I, which you and I could not purchase through all the wealth in the world. Eli, who told Job, he said, will, will he esteem your riches? No, not gold or all the, all the forces of strength. You see, God owes you and I nothing. And God will never be indebted to us either. Paul asked that who has given him and not been recompensed again. He said that it is not my works for God that's going to earn me a place in heaven. Paul said, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul declared that if Abraham had been justified by his works, then we would have something to glory in, but not of God. That if we could be saved by our good works, then we could boast in what we did for the Lord. But our salvation is so complete in the Lord and it's such a complete gift that it's something that you and I cannot boast in it of ourselves. It is the very glory of God that's come down and to walk among us. It is today by His grace that you and I are saved. But I've got to be careful today because I can still have an attitude of works. I can have the attitude that as long as that I obey one, two, three, four, and five, then then I'm going to earn something. But that's based on works. I've come today to remind us that it is by grace that you and I were saved. Not about the labels that I put on myself. Not about, and I've got to be careful that I don't become legalistic and I don't live like the Pharisees and, and I just don't get an attitude towards somebody else. But realize today, the very grace of God that's working in my life is the very grace that is working in their life. Paul said in our text that we are his workmanship. Man, how great is that? We are his workmanship. We are the product of Him. Which lets me know today that I can't judge you. Because if not, I'm judging another man's servant, as Paul said. But you are God's workmanship. And sometimes there's a little additional stubbornness that comes in me. And He's got to work a little bit hard. But during the midst of my stubbornness, when He's working on me, somebody can cast judgment. But I am clay into the very master's hand. It's just nothing more than the very things that I work with sometimes with building materials. Some materials are harder than other materials to work with. And so it is a day in my life. But we are a product of Him. And we are a product of His workmanship. So some of us today may be, uh, be harder and and not be as pliable, and some people may be softer. And there is, you know, they kind of advance a little bit more because when God pushes on them, they just move and they don't bounce back. But sometimes I feel He pushes and He's trying to mold me, and all of a sudden, sometimes my stubbornness wants to push back a little bit. But I am, and you are, His workmanship. It is not my works of God that has any value, but it is God's work in my life that creates value. We are His workmanship and God is working in your life today. 
God is working in your life today. And so we may not totally understand what he's doing and how he's working it, but he is working in your life. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And I can't take credit for it. I can't take credit for the way, for, for, for my salvation. It is a gift from God. Salvation, Paul said, he's, he said, it's not a reward of the good things that I've done. So none of us can boast about it. Man, isn't that so cool? God knows exactly what he's doing because he knows my human nature. Because if I can do all the good things and I feel good about myself and now I would boast about of all the great things that I've done. But he said that salvation, it's not about all the good deeds that I've done so that I can't boast about it. But he said that you and I, that we are a work, a God's masterpiece. And he created us anew in Christ Jesus. So that we can do the good things that he's planned for us long ago. You're his masterpiece. So God says, be careful because I can label myself based on the fact of, well, I've done this for you, Lord. And I've done that for you, Lord. And I didn't sin there. And I didn't sin there. And Lord... I sacrificed my life and gave my life to the ministry just for you, Lord. Doesn't that earn me brownie points? There's a day coming when we will all stand before him face to face. And I will give an account for the things that I've done. But I won't be able to go back and have bragging rights. Well, Lord, I did this, so won't this earn? And he'll look at me and he goes, my grace covered you. And so today it is, even in my life, that I have to be careful not to get to a point that I begin to label myself to make myself feel like I'm saved, to make myself feel like, well, I'm better than somebody else. No, I've come today to remind us that salvation is a gift, and it is by grace today that I'm saved. And so I'm leaning upon that grace and I hold it dear to my heart. He created us anew in Christ Jesus. <laughs> I'm so thankful for that. The old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. That when I'm in Christ, He changes my label. So that we can do the good things that He's planned for us long ago. Amen. You thankful for His Word today? Amen. I'm thankful for that gift. I never wanted to, 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 to take it for granted today of all the great things that God's doing in my life, but I want to continue to strive that, Lord, it's a continual progress in my life. I'm going to continue walking, Lord, and I don't want to ever turn around from you, but, Lord, I'm going to keep on striving to be more...